Hi everyone, my name is Karen Tamir and I am doing uh, my Ustream show today, making a layout for Flying Unicorn using the Seven Dots Studio uh, papers and flowers. I'm glad to see you all here and I'm just going to get started. I need to flip my camera. Just a few announcements. Um, any products that I used today, uh, I'll just giving I think 10% off at the store and they just press on the tab that says Ustream. Um, and you'll be able to like buy those. I have some cool products for you today to show you. And also next week, I think Delina is on next Wednesday. So make sure you come back and see her beautiful stuff. And we'll get started. Okay, let me switch the camera. Sorry, just want to get the camera just right for you guys. Ah. No, a bit see, won't record over Jennifer's. It will just. Okay, well, we're going to start here. You can see, it seems very. I wanted to focus. Okay. Uh, let me try to put some more light into this. Okay, so I'm using, uh, here's the layout that I'm using today. Oh no, Can, could you guys see it? Oh yeah. It's a Seven Dots Studio uh, design. It's called Country Collection, designed by Finna Bear. Um, it's so, it's, uh, Alda still has some in his store. So, oh, hi Carrie, I can see. Alda still has some in the store, so you can get yourself at least, I think there's at least a pack there if you haven't gotten this yet. It's a very nice collection, very um, vintage. Uh, there's nice blues and teal and purples on it, so it's really nice. And we're going to create this layout that you see right here, and I will show you step by step how to do it. Still don't like how this camera is looking. Sorry, one second. I want to try and get it a little bit better. Is that better? Okay. So. Oh, it's not in this frame. Why is it not in the frame? Okay. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the paper that I actually used. It's called uh, Cold Country. Sorry, let me see what the name of it is. As it was before. It has like a wood green kind of feel on one side. It doesn't actually feel what it looks. And this is the side I actually used. And I kind of wanted to hide this house that is over here. I don't know if you can see. Can you see that? See? Um, I wanted to hide that. So I used um, some paste to cover it. And I'm going to show you, okay? So I'm going to put this aside. Why is the light? Why is the so terrible? Sorry about that. I don't know why. Why is there no light here? Is it just me or is it? Do you guys see it well? Because it looks really dark suddenly. Looks like the whole camera is dark. Sorry about that. I don't know why. Anyone knows when seven dots? Yeah, new seven dots lines are coming out in mid September, I think. And you're really going to like them. I'm just worried that something happened to my camera because I can't seem to, it just looks very, very, very dark and it shouldn't look this dark. Okay, I don't know. Okay, I'll try my best. Hopefully you guys can see. Um, so, I don't know, I'm very... Can somebody answer to see if you guys see it well or is it too dark? I can't figure it out why it became so dark suddenly. I haven't changed anything. No, it looks really bad. It looks fuzzy. Sure. This thing looks. Okay, fine, I'll start. So what I use for this um 
for this uh, layout. The first thing I did is I wanted to, as I said, cover this area so <clears throat> I can use it as a background only. And um, what I did is I used this, uh, it's Wendy Vecchi's Embossing Paste Studio 490. And it's just uh, a really nice, uh, just really amazing. I actually bought it from Flying Unicorn a few, a few, like, I don't know, a few months ago, and I just really, and I just tried it now, and I really loved it. Oh, I see, you're right. Maybe it is, you're right, maybe it is. Oh, there you go, you're right, Jackie, thank you. Okay, so what I did is I actually used this stencil from Prima. It's a new Prima stencil. It's stone wall number one. And the code is, I write them always on my stencil so I remember what they are because I lose the, the packaging. 575939. Um, so what I did is I used this to cover the, um, the, the house. And the way I use, I use this paste, like look, look how cool it looks. This is the black one. And now Alda has a few more colors in stock. So they're just really, really, they go on really smooth and they have like a kind of a glittery, um, how do you call this? A glittery um, specks inside. I don't know. And it looks glittery when you buy it. Anyway, so I, uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite stencils from all the stone ones. And I've used it quite a lot. So what I'm going to do, I want to try and make uh, the stone pattern fuller in the center as you want it to not be all the same. You don't want everything to look the same. You don't want the, it to be even. You want it to go out more in the center. And I'll be moving my stencil around just to be able to get that feel. And look how smooth it goes. It's like butter. No joke. I mean, I, it's very similar to the... Um, the soft, um, what do you call it, light molding paste that I use from from uh, Golden, but I don't know if this one is even smoother. I don't know if that can. That's even a word. So I'm using it here, and look how beautiful it goes. Like it really embosses the stencil perfectly. You see? Look. Just gives it a perfect, perfect um, feel. And now I'm going to make a little bit more but this time I'm not going to go all the way in I'm just going to um, go a little bit more this way and lower down so don't cover the whole the whole stencil just a little bit and um, you want to make sure it's almost like going to you want to kind of make a hill with it and don't press too hard because it will make some grooves on the other pieces that you see. So I'm gonna get this. And sorry, one minute. Just walk around this and clean this out. And it also dries really quickly, which is nice. Let me just finish on this on the other side. Hopefully you cannot here goes the other side. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want it to kind of match up with the rest. I even, oh, see, I missed a spot here. And like no stone wall is perfect, so you don't want it to be, oh, you see it even came out like that a little bit. And that's okay, that looks pretty nice. I don't get upset when things like that happen, I just move on. And I even might do this on the other side a little bit to even it out, so. That's good. And I'm going to put some more in the front here. This is kind of going to come out out of this side. I just like to give it, gives my layout some, like a flow. So things flow throughout. So you're really, this paste is really amazing. I have to say, like, I'm really impressed in it. I'm not trying to, to say anything about it, but I just really, really love it. And you just want to, let me see, I want to cover the house a little bit more over here. And that's good. Even a little bit more. So I'm kind of created kind of a triangle. And it doesn't really matter. Look, I, you can even sometimes have, um, you can use the, 
the other front and kind of make yourself little patterns around it so it will actually so if you don't want to waste any any of the paste just make patterns with it it works well too and so then we're going to dry it up and it dries pretty pretty nicely so it's good hi jennifer well i'm drying okay so let me clean my spatula oh and i like applying it with a spatula i prefer that over um over those cards some people use cards and stuff i just find those very hard to to use okay so you see the pattern Oh, thank you. Yes, Jennifer, you're commenting. Yes. <laughs> I just did it for fun because I had to. I, had, I got them done today. They were so gross since two weeks ago. So I had to get my nails done today. You guys are so funny. No, no. That, this stencil is really one of the best ones. of the, When I got it, I have... A, this sorry i'm going to two topics at once first of all the stencil carry it's really really nice i'm not joking actually all the three stone walls i had to get them i only got one in my prima package when i originally got it and I actually bought the other two from alda because i wanted to have them all so they're really really good and even the other six by six that came out they're called decor uh, they're also really good regarding my nails <laughs> i actually um have good genetics my mom has really good nails and she gave them to me and they're very hard so they do look nice I don't need to they are mine they're not like fake ones I'm blabbing as I'm drying and you'll see this dries pretty quick see it's almost already dry so I want to clean my stencil so I'm going to put this down. Sometimes I do this when I'm too impatient and I want to do other things. And I literally just let this dry up like this. So now because I'm running out of time and I don't want to ruin my amazing stencil, I want to just kind of wipe it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Jennifer, you make me laugh. Okay, so this is pretty good. I think it's dry and we're going to get to the next step. Let me just put this aside. Just cleaning up my desk. I don't like working with mediums on the table. Anyway, so as you can see, yeah, this is good. I actually would like to get sometimes i want to get my nails done with um, shellac but i really worry about the uv any uh, so i don't do that anyways okay so as you can see this this is um this is how i did it. and i actually started like this i actually thought i was going to make the layout going this way and then i really liked the way it was falling down so i turned the layout around now that you don't have the house there's really no elements that are kind of making it look straight or not so you can turn your page any way you want and I grabbed um, two of the colors that I, I liked from Color Blooms, which are just really good sprays from Prima. I used the Iris, which is like a purplish color. And I also used the Teal. Um, teal and I think a little bit of the, of the Glistening Waves, which is actually my favorite. And a tip that has been given to Prima, that Carrie actually gave him Prima, is that my glistening waves this is my second time refilling it i actually uh, refilled it with water and it actually works just as um just as nicely with um even though it's like the second time around they put enough uh, medium in there that you can actually have enough um, um oh, <laughs> you can actually um find it fi sorry i lost my train of thought because i was reading something i won't look anymore at the computer um you can refill it and there's so much uh, color inside that it will work again and again i think at least two or three times so i'm going to start spraying and i also let the sprays drip around so and to let the sprays drip you need to add a little bit of water, otherwise they will not. 
unless you are if you don't want to waste I meant to say if you don't want to waste your sprays meaning you don't want to uh, to spray a lot so it drips you just add a little bit of water and it gives it a faint drippage and I'm gonna mix some of the purple mix enough we just want a, like kind of a faint look okay drips 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 love drips and if you want to stop the drips you just press on them with a wipe and they I want to put some of the more of glistening waves Um, I hope somebody is not messaging me now. I just realized that I didn't have my. You guys see properly? Hope you're seeing. Okay, let me put some more purple and then I'll dry it up. Okay, this is a drip. Come on, drip, drip. I use my finger sometimes to help it go down. Okay, so a little bit more. Just know that. Okay, so if you want to help it, you can make drips with your fingers. It's like finger painting. Okay, so now that I have. Okay, now that I have this done. I'm going to dry it up. Yeah, Color Bloom had, they had to recall some of them and they are coming up with them again. Um, I think the nozzles might be the same. They're just like the where they're, they're just packaging them differently. <coughs> so they don't spill during, um, so they don't spill during pack, during uh, shipping. So what's going to happen there, I think they might give you two different like lids like one lid will just close it and the other lid is the nozzle that's what I've heard but I could be wrong and yeah everything is coming out mid-august so it's nice okay I need to dry and sometimes what I do is I turn the page you see how it's really wet underneath I turn it around just so <clears throat> just so it dries the back a little bit because it's just so wet and it warps so this one helps it warp back a little bit and I'm very impatient so sometimes I just let it and leave it a little bit wet and start <clears throat> and start uh, building my page even though it's not fully dry okay where did I put that paper okay So, oh yeah, Denise, the color combo actually is very similar to the colors that are actually from these papers, from the Seven Dots papers. If you can see the logo here on the side, oh, you can't see it. It's pretty much those colors. And I just like it because you can use it for, you can, you can match the Prima flowers perfectly to it, and you'll see in a second. Okay, I think it's pretty good. So the other thing I did is I used a photo of my son. We were hanging, he was like hanging off of a tire. And the reason why I wanted the downward motion, it's because I wanted the downward motion of the swing. And I used this picture of my son. I like printing my pictures smaller now, so I end up printing two on the same um on the same four by six uh photo and I send it and um, <clears throat> what I do is I actually have an app on my phone that lets me do that and make smaller photos and I use uh, one of the pieces of the 6x6 paper pad from 7 dots 
and it's a really cute one. It has teardrops on it. And um, I'm, I cut it in half because I wanted to kind of frame my picture with it. And if you don't have a frame, you can build your own. What I did is I just got it together like this and just put it like this and nobody can tell that it's there. Sorry, you can see my arm. So I'm gonna glue this to the other one, one to the other, just to create a little frame around my photo to measure. Oops, sorry. I didn't realize I'm out of focus. I'm out of the thing. Okay, again, I cut the two pieces that the thing in half doesn't have to be even because you're just gluing it on top. Make sure you can you make a kind of a frame around your photo and you stick it together. Okay, and then I'll mat my photo with um, some foam tape. I like raising it a little bit. And I usually just put a photo, like a like a, um, a piece of foam tape right in the middle because I never know what flowers I'm going to or embellishments I'm going to be fitting in. So I want to make sure that I have enough room for them. So later on I go and I fit the rest. <clears throat> now what I did, I didn't actually like that you could see here. So what I ended up doing is I ended up ripping the bottom. So I give it a ripped look. And then I use these two pieces on the sides, and I will show you. So this is basically the middle of my frame, the middle of the frame. And as you can see, I started looking at downward motion. I figured, oh, how can I make any type of um, uh, movement going down as if it's a swing? And I grab my little stitched stamps from Prima, which I actually love so much and I made little lines going down I don't know if you guys have this one but um, but it's just the best thing and actually I don't know if you know this tidbit of who designed these but Heidi Kelly designed these the, all the stitched um, all the stitched stamps from Prima anyways okay so I'll grab my stand, my my ink, and I'm gonna stamp. Oops. I'm gonna put the picture aside for a second. And the other thing I did with this with these stamps is that I um <clears throat> I made a frame around the whole layout. And the way I did it, I don't use the same one all the time. I I kind of like switch them around. I take turns with them so then it makes it kind of a stitched pattern that an even stitched pattern so I'm gonna start I like I think it's this one I like okay so I again I use my hands um, yeah no more sewing I think they're in the store I saw them were in stock I thought they were in stock because I tried to use things that were in stock this time because last time everything was out of stock so yeah, I kind of made these lines and um, you want to make the longer ones in the middle because that's the longest part of the layout and uh, oh, I'm using sorry I don't know if you can see this because it's not in frame I'm using the archival ink to do it Oops. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just making them around the page. And um, I used a different one now. Let's see, this the lines, these lines. So I'm going to, okay. So I just wanna make some uneven lines. So I don't want them to all be the same. Okay, 
And if you don't want the whole stamp to go on it because you're using your fingers, just lift it up a little bit. I know you can't, you might not be able to tell, but I lift the stamp up and then I, it just makes a pattern that I want. So let's say I only want this little bit here. I just, just press on that one and it, that's all comes, it comes out. Perfect. Good. Now I'm going to make the one around the page and I'm going to use this one to start off. Again, I'm going to ink it and I'm going to make, again, doesn't have to be even. You want to create a pattern around the page. It just gives it a kind of a border. So I'm not going to go one, I'm going to stamp with this one first and then I'm going to use another one. Oh, let me go through. Okay, hold on. You see how it's so it's it looks like you you change your machine settings then you start at a different one. And you have two options here in the corners. You can actually make a like a kind of cross them, or you could just end them at the but you have to really calculate to end them properly. So that's why I don't always bother doing that. I'm not a perfectionist, so that's why. Okay, good. Hold on the other side. Let me try this side now. Okay. Just want to finish the edges. And good. Oh, you know what? Add some of this here. Okay. Okay, so that's good. I mean, it could go all the way in, but I don't know if you'll be able to see the stitching there. I can try. There you can see a little bit of it. Okay, so that's basically the background. And now we're going to start building up the layout. The last thing I will do at the end is just color in the edges, but I don't want to do it now because I don't want to have my page all wet. So let's start building up. This is the first thing that we put in and I kind of center it again. I'm only going to, I'm reading it, I try to read at the same time. I'm not being very good at this. Uh, like you, Delaina, I know it's hard to look at this, at the chat and do it at the same time. Again, I'm only putting one right in the middle. Okay. Just so I could like place it where I want it. And because I'm putting a little wooden pin to hold as if it's holding the layout, I want to make sure I leave enough space for it. And I'm going to add it now to make sure that I did actually use it. And this is from, um, where is it? Sorry. This is Prima's um, Lifetime Embellishments. They were in the store a little while ago. So, um, and I used, of course, the matching one. I love these. I love using them to decorate, embellish the pictures and make it seem as if I'm holding it together with the pin. So there is that. Okay. There. So that's kind of holding. It looks like it's as if it's holding, but it really isn't. It's not even glued to the bottom. And the next thing I do is I want to put these, you know, the little pieces that I had left over from the bottom. I'm going to stick them with some foam tape behind. I want to give them some height. Good. And then the other one. Okay, good. Okay. And again, I'm not making them even. I really love this, the colors of this collection. So I really wanted to mimic them as much as possible. Okay. That's good. Now we're going to add our flowers. And I use the different kinds of flowers for this. <clears throat> One of the ones I used is, I had left over from this Tatiana Oceana collection. And I just had this like purplish looking one. So I figured, you know what, I might as well use it. My, this one might not be in stock, but I think all the other ones are. I just had one in my stash, but you can replace it with anything you want. 
Um, I love these. These are just so beautiful. These uh, life, I think they're lifetime. I'm not sure. Let me just tell you once I look at it. No, uh, sorry, Ladybird, the Ladybird collection. I have them in different colors. When I got them, I really did not like them because they used their leaves would come apart, like the petals. I meant to say, but it just suddenly I fell in love with them and I couldn't go back. I really, really like that they were. They could you you could use the whole stem and that was perfect. I'm also using some Lamia which are again are my definitely favorites and Avante I love these too they're my favorites I, know. I mean everything is my favorite I guess everything prima is my favorite so it's hard to tell <laughs> okay so I'm gonna just start building the flower and the way I what I like about these they kind of because the stems are like so large you can use them to kind of the, the, you, depending on which direction they are you can use them as hanging flowers which I really like or, or like almost like vines and I cut them long enough so they can hang okay and another thing that I you can do is once you've cut these you see this little thing I don't know I keep on saving it. I figure the one day I could make something with it could make good something for something else I always save them um just trying to look up so now i'm going to build the flowers and i'm going to grab a few from here i think i like these ones right so let's like The thing about like the backgrounds is that a lot of the times they get covered. Unfortunately, they get covered by other, by the flowers, by the embellishment. So that's why sometimes I have to go back and add some more. I'm using two of the teal Lamia flowers. So these are um, Lamia six five five three six zero. Oh no, sorry, no no no, I might talk wrong. Five seven one five four two. So that's, those are those Lamia flowers and they're actually one of my favorites from last year's um, release they're perfect they're matte and they're they they just match everything <coughs> now I want to create more of a down, downward motion on this so I want to have it kind of like going down but I, at the same time, you don't want to just create things that are not connected to each other. So you need to build up. <clears throat> and I'm going to use these ones too. And I want to put some of these. So if I just kind of stick it here. This one is too long for you. The long one should go somewhere. So depending on the stems, I end up putting them where they belong. So this is a shorter stem. And if you want a longer stem, it should go more in the middle. And a shorter stem over here. Okay, good. And you see, this creates this motion down the page, which I love so much. There we go. I'm even going to use the last one. I think I only added four in the other, but I really would like to have this one here too. Okay, okay. it just looks pretty. And um, I'm going to use some of these matching ones. Just to kind of... These are really cute too. Um, let's see where we can put this one. Kind of fits over here. And then one more. We can just... Put it over here. I'm not doing it exactly how the other one looks like. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it. Let me just try to glue the flower so then I can add the feathers after. Um, actually, you know what? No, I can add the feathers now. I just want to see. I try to make it seem as if you could see how the layout would look all together. And um, I use these, uh, this package. I love these. They're they came in one of the kits a few months ago, 
um, the resin icons, uh, resin basically from Prima, resin feathers, and I just really love them. And again, if they help me do this downward motion that I'm trying to do. And I think like if I put it over here, I have this little one here that could go, let's see, maybe here, no, I'll make it there. And this one come here. So what it does, again, I'm creating this, this downward motion. I know I keep on saying that, but that's basically what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create uh, a feeling that the swing is going down like the string. And then I'm going to glue it. I'm using my handy dandy fabric tack. And I know I don't need to talk about this one. I think everybody's familiar with it. And I just glob it on. Start gluing them all. And basically glues everything. It glues the feathers, it glues the stems. I add some glue on the stems too. You want to make sure that they're pretty much secured. So you want to add some glue to the stems also. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so I'll do this one. So I'm not talking a lot, I'm not explaining now, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm trying to look at, at the chat while I'm, here, while I'm doing this. Okay, so one sec. Sorry, it's quiet while I'm gluing, but I am watching the chat. While I'm gluing, it's easy to watch the chat, so you guys should chat so I can see what's going on. Sometimes the, the picture moves a little bit. Okay, almost done. I want to show you some other things I did. I just really like, you see how this, this wall, oh, somebody's messaging me. Someone is asking, hold on. Alison, the line I just went, can you color the feathers? Yes, you can color the feathers. I will show you actually. You know what? Let's do that right now. Um, I will show you how to how color the feathers. When I color the, when I color them, you can color them with anything actually, even color blooms or any type of spray. Okay, let me see. I'm done. Okay, um, so fine. Let me show you some a couple of things. So the, what I did is, you want me to show you how to color the feathers? <laughs> I want to do that first. So what you can do is you can use some of the color bloom spray you can use here and we're going to use this also for the border. Let's get on that and I want to get a paintbrush. Wait, sorry, watch my hand. Okay, look how nice it's going to look. Huh? You can color the feathers. There we are. 
you can use paint, but I think you want to do something more sheer because they're very intricate and you don't want to lose the... Um... Did anybody, is everybody okay? Did I lose, I lost the whole thing. I lost the chat. Hold on one second. Did I lose the chat? Is everybody there? Oh, I hope I didn't. Okay. Okay, I hope I didn't lose anybody. Okay, but you see, like you said, I'll put it a bit closer. Um, yeah, I lost my chat too. I hope, every, is everybody okay? Like, is everybody can hear me and see me? Does somebody answer me? So then I know. Here. Okay, so that's fine. So as you can see, whoever asked for about this, okay? Okay, there you go. Okay, I thought something had happened. You see how they colored it? There. Who was it, the one who asked? Oh, DK. Okay, DK, or I don't know. Okay, good. So you guys can see that. So you can color it different colors. And now I'm going to just go and color the edges. And you can use, I'm sure you can use other products to color the feathers. It's not the only one. I've seen people put glitter on them. Jess, and I think Louise, Louise Nelson, she got, she, um, she puts like, she puts a gel medium on them and then she puts glitter and gets them all glitzy. You can do anything with any embellishment, truly. Okay, you see how it gives it like a, a frame? So this is what I'm doing. I'm just framing the photo. So I tried doing it with the, originally I tried doing it with the purple but it didn't work it was too light i don't know why the color the light the um, i meant to say the color bloom iris column bloom is very light and you cannot um get it to go on well and you know what i feel like i'm missing some purple in here so i'm gonna just add a little bit of purple also so this is why i always sometimes go back and And add some more drips. So if you don't want to make, you want to don't want to spray now because you're worried that you're gonna ruin everything. You can just use your paintbrush and kind of move it downwards, and it makes drips on your page. And I do this a lot to kind of give it give it um, motion. And sometimes just. I use the paintbrush to just use it as shadows. Okay, so this is part of it. The other thing I did regarding the title, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Okay, so I use this title. It's these lace stickers from Prima. They're really cute, but they're white. And and uh, you cannot see them white on white. You won't be able to see. So what I did is I color them with some chalk ink. Sorry, I just want to clean this. Just getting my. So I color them in black chalk ink. This uh, black coal. From Prima, the ink builds, um, and I just went all around and color them on. Just dab them on. Now, just so you know, you have to then clean them up because what happens is that the background, the sticker, still stays on it. It's the the sticker is kind of clear in the in the, in the back. So you have to kind of go around and and clean them. And most of it stays on. Oops, sorry, it's too wet. And, but you want to leave. You want to make sure that you can see what the words say. Is anybody asking anything? Yeah, those lace stickers, there's a different types. There is some doilies. See, I'm just cleaning around the letters. 
okay, with a wipe. That's what I'm doing. And oh, too much, it's too wet. This wipe is too. So you see now you can see the wording. Oops, now you can see the wording. And what happened is that I tried to. I really wanted to write "Life is sweet." But when I took the first sticker out, everything went crazy and it got it bent and I wasn't able to do it. So instead I wrote sweet, happy life. So I took words from different parts. Sweet. And I cut them around because it's very hard to, these are not easy to, to take off. So that's the first one. I'm going to wipe it with my finger a little bit. Now, when you're taking these out, be very careful. If you don't put them on straight the first time, that is it. So. And I did a mistake. Hopefully. Yay! Look, I got it the right way. Sweet. Oh, I still forgot to put the mini sachet. The flowers, sweet. Yeah, does anybody have any questions while I'm peeling these? Oh, we're almost. No second chances with that. Yeah, I know. These are like, I really screwed up the first time. So now I know to handle them with care. <laughs> Oh, I think that one is a little bit crooked, but oh well. And I guess you could keep the other words, so and is. I'm sure you could use them for something else. I don't usually, sometimes you see that that one didn't come out as straight as I wanted. Oh, God, it's not peeling. Okay, there we go. Grab it. Okay, sweet, happy. Okay. There we go. Oh, what happened here? I didn't know. Okay, so don't do what I just did because they peel off. Okay, and the next thing I just forgot, I am adding these like little mini purple flowers. I told you I was missing some purple. I knew that it was missing. So this was it. I love these little flowers. You can kind of like tuck them anywhere. And I'm going to tuck a few of these here. Can you still see? Why am I so zoomed out? Goodness. I don't want to ruin this. You know what? Forget it. So I can put one over here and another one. I'm sticking it over here. Gosh, it's really zoomed out, huh? I don't know why. It's kind of like stretch the canvas a little bit. Sorry, I want to kind of move it up a little bit, maybe. Okay, so the last step before I go is adding one of my favorite cheap embellishments and that is cheesecloth I love adding cheesecloth I love giving it these uh, spreading these fibers and putting them on my pages because it gives it so much texture so who's talking about food right now Brussels sprouts okay so what I do is I cut a little piece 
and with my fingers I fray it. I think that's the correct word, I hope so. And that the more you open them, the more the strings are gonna kind of fall apart and it's nicer to tuck in underneath. Now usually the glue is still the glue in on my um on my, under my flowers is still kind of glue like kind of wet. So all you have to do is just tuck this underneath and you're good. It will just stick there. You don't need to um you don't need to like add more glue unless it's really um, it's a big piece so you see it's falling off okay so here's a little bit more sometimes I kind of make a little hole in the middle and I'll just put it around it's nice to also if you want to continue the downward motion put it this way Cheesecloth, Brussels sprouts. I'm really not following this conversation. <laughs> oh, Lisa, I'm so. <laughs> you know what? When you're a flower addict, I I've told many people in the past that they're just when they hoard their flowers, it's just pointless because you're not enjoying it. You're just hoarding, <laughs> just hoarding them. And one friend, Kathy, I know she's not on, but one friend actually listened to me and she actually started using them and then suddenly, voila, it's like a new, whole new world. She loves using them now. So it's nice. Let's see. You guys okay? Any questions? Because um, I'm kind of done. So I want to know if you guys have any questions. Should we add one more step to it that I didn't add before? I don't know if I did this last time. Are you guys good? Okay. Okay, I think we're pretty much done. If you guys want, one of the th nice things I like doing is blending it all together. And I didn't do it on the previous layout, but I can show you how to do it now. For those of you who maybe were not here last week, uh, I think I showed it how I did it last week. Um, I have a few more minutes so I can do that. Yay, okay. So I'm gonna use gesso. And with a paintbrush, okay. I'm kind of going to edge the flowers and by doing that it's almost like a distress and it blends the flowers in with the rest of the page especially if you have a light colored page like a white so you put it only at the edge of the petals sometimes I go more roughly and you can cover some of the green that's sticking out it just gives it almost like a shadow on top Okay. Don't go too hard with it because then it will you will end up covering everything. You can also do that to the embellishments and to the papers. That comes instead of distressing, you can use the white as the white um, gesso as um, as a distress tool instead of having to distress before every single thing. Some people love distressing. I find it makes such a big mess. Okay, there. Almost done. And this is it. All done. Yeah, it kind of blends it all in the gesso I really like it and gesso also is good if you want to hide anything you don't want people if like a few weeks ago I made a mistake I had just finished the layout and then this bottle this silly bottle spilled all over my layout and I ended up um, covering it with gesso and a new technique came out of it uh, so this is it hold on let me turn the camera so all of you can see me sorry there we are 
Thank you so much for joining Flying Unicorn today and me. I'm so happy that you all came to, to see my show. And um, I'll show you this layout like this way now. Okay, you see how it is? I mean, I haven't cut the, I didn't cut the, the, the piece here, but it makes sense. And um, yeah, well, this is, this is it. I don't know if you have any questions. Please feel free to ask before I, before I stop the recording. And I'm just really happy that you all joined us and hope to see you next week. Well, the line is gonna create, I think, a mini album, which is really exciting. So I can't wait to see how it looks. And um, yeah, thank you everyone. And we'll talk soon. Oh, I'm, I'll be in September again. So creating a surprise. So come and see me again. Bye.